what was I doing? Oh yeah, so I was going to um, move the stuff where I'm parsing the start and end up to where I've typed const right there. Let's see, auto change uh, audio levels for OBS scenes. Back to this thing. So we want um, something, something like uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just call it segment start equals um, not format. Something like parse, I think is the name of the thing. Parse ISO duration. There we go. Segment dot start. There we go. And then the end. And then, I think it's just called format duration now, right? There we go, segment ends. Can go there. I don't know how I copied it twice, but okay. And then we just need to fix the import. Update the import. Go. Okay, so this should um, result in a kind of a, a readable <laughs> uh, value. Let's go restart the front end. And then, there we go. Let's refresh. Bad gateway, still refreshing. There we go. All right. Ooh, wild goal bad if there's a chat. All right, so now, <laughs> uh, now it says 5M and 5M 38.87999999995 seconds. <laughs> okay, so that that's kind of what I want, but we don't need, first of all, there wasn't that much precision. So that's just, that's nonsense. But also, uh, it's too much. So let's, but that's the reason to put things in separate functions is we have a designated place while we're, we're, we're working on this. Um, hey, Kingslayer, welcome. Welcome, welcome. How is it going? How's your Sunday? Is that? Looking at your name, I realized that I never really looked closely. Is that I-L-L -L or is it three I's? Or is it three L's? <laughs> is it is it Ill Kingslayer <laughs> or three Kingslayer? Anyway. You caught Golbat. All right, I think I want to, what do I want to do here? So the, the, the thing is, is days and hours and minutes are never gonna have any decimals in them because we're always using math.floor to round down. So it's only seconds here. Ooh. 100 bits. Foxy Blue <laughs> just cheered 100 bits. Woo. Woo. Thank you for the 100 bits. Uh, so far, so good. Just laying in bed right now. Three L's. Okay. Oh, interesting. I would not have guessed three L's. Uh, seriously, but okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I was, uh, my alarm always goes off at 5.30 a.m. Uh, and I woke up this morning. <laughs> to see that uh, Mark C was live. So I went over and hung out over there for a bit. Which uh, I guess has been the thing for the last couple of Sundays, but yeah. Uh, so I went around seconds. I don't, I don't want to lose all the precision though. Um, is there a way? 
to uh, round to a certain level of precision. Let's, let's try something here. Let's see if we can get Copilot to write this for us. Round to three decimal places. Maybe just two is fine. Okay, so math.round. Okay, gives us uh, rounded to the nearest integer. If we multiply by 100, that gives us two ex extra digits. And then we divide by 100. I, will that work? Uh, okay, we'll, we'll check that in a little bit. Let's, let's keep on working on, uh, what are we gonna do here with this UI, right? So now is the time to do some styling. Obviously, we don't actually want the magenta color uh, or any of this other color stuff. This is just kind of illustri illustrative. Um, I don't want that padding either, honestly. Let's see. Let's, so let's do this. I'm going to save this so that we have kind of a clean slate. And we'll restart the front end. And uh, see how that goes. So King, have you have you been to one of these coding streams before? I, I don't feel like I remember you having been at one of these. sometime last week for a little yeah cool cool um, yeah so this is this is this app that I've been working on for like the last couple months uh, and this specifically is a record for the stream from the 24th so the Wednesday before last I think that was the first Powell world stream and so I have a transcript that's auto generated from the video of the whole shebang and what I'm trying to do is figure out how I want to show the transcript in a way that will make sense if I want to be able to edit it too. Uh, so let's play around a little bit with the styling here. I think I do want some, some styling around the segment. Let's see, if I go over to Let's, let's go full screen here and maybe can I dock to right? There we go. Okay. This'll do. This'll do. Right, so here's here's the span that contains the segment. And uh, what are we gonna do? We can we can do margin on a span, right? What's that do? Yeah, that gives us space all the way around. And that that applies to every segment, right? And then segment start. We'll, we'll start with just hiding it. Like that. Same thing for the end. Okay. So, it's not great. It's not exactly what I want. Um, display inline block, is that what I want? Maybe. Actually, that's not too bad. Maybe, maybe I don't, 
maybe I actually want like individual blocks here. The segments are actually looking at them like this are a bit larger than I was thinking they were. Of course, some of that. Okay, yeah, maybe maybe that's fine like that. Yeah. Okay. So then this would be just like display block, yeah. Same thing. Or it could just be a div instead of a span. Either or. Um, yeah. In that case, in that case, in that case, maybe instead of hiding it and showing it on, um, on, um, hover or something. Maybe we can put the start and end of each segment off to the to the left or the right. Uh, I'm kind of tempted to do this kind of in the, the old style way. There, there are other ways of doing this now. Margin. What is a different way of doing that styling? If we did flex grid, yeah, we could do flex grid on this. Uh, so, I know one thing I want to do here, which is to change. So we're we're going to um, change the element here. Um, do I need a div wrapping this whole thing? I don't think I do. I don't think I do. We gonna hop in the shower? All right. Yeah. Uh, I'm. Uh, I'll be there. Assuming I. Uh, I might, depending on how when you do it, I might be uh, eating after this stream as I do. But I'll join when I can. So I think maybe just a div here for each of the segments. BRB lurk, all right. Thanks for lurking. All right, so we have a div for each segment and we'll have some spans. And then uh, I think what we do for the segment is we do a display flex, which this thing wants to do anyway. Uh, justify content space between, I don't know what justify content here does. I'm not going to include it since I don't really know what that does. And then what we want to do is we want to do something where the start and the end are a certain width. Um, how do we do that? Let's say they're 100 pixels um, for both. Oh, I was going to do that for us anyway. There we go. And then um, let's see where this gets us. So again, very annoyingly, have to uh, restart the front end. I'm not gonna give up on figuring out how to <laughs> have this work inside of Docker. Be dev in Docker. Maybe if I keep looking, eventually I run into uh, a solution that works. Host attribute. Port. Host fly to the beat command line. You'll see. Yeah, but we have that. Yeah, we do that. We do this. I'll keep on thinking about it. Okay, so the front end should be restarted. All right, 
And so we see some effect of using display uh, flex on our wrapper here. And we have a margin bottom that gives us a little bit of space below. Now, this is all well and good, but I think we want to, hmm, would CSS grid be a better way of doing this? I mean, I think, hmm, maybe, it may be a little easier to express what I wanna do that way. Because we effectively want two columns and we want some stuff to appear in one column and some stuff to appear in another column. Uh, so grid seems like a good way of doing that. Uh, how do I do, how do I do grid again? How do I do things? Uh, let's see, CSS grid. The great thing with all this front end stuff is that there are complete guides to doing anything and everything. CSS Grid Basics. Most browsers ship native unprefix support for it. Uh, display Grid, that, that's what it is. And the, the great thing about using something like Copilot here is that once I put some stuff in, indicating kind of the direction I want to go, do you sit <laughs> Grid, um, then it's going to start like giving more things in that direction, like Grid Simply Columns. Um, so one FR, hold on, let's go back to the doc that I just pulled up. So grid template columns, track size can be a link percentage or a fraction of the free space in the grid using the FR unit and line name, a wild Vulpix appears in the chat. So you have something like one FR, one FR, fractional units, or you can do like, so we could do like uh, for the column template, we could do something like 100 picks one FR. I think we could do that. We'll see what that does anyway. And the other thing I need to do is, there's something else we need? Yeah, grid template areas. Grid template areas. Grid templates. Right. Um, so this is gonna be something like, like this actually start in text text right so this this says that if you can imagine like a grid a two by two grid the left column is going to be first the start and then below that the end and then the right column which should make up most of the space is all of the text uh, and so then instead of specifying widths and stuff on these individual elements what we can do yeah grid area end grid area start and then the text will be grid area text. All right. So then, now I, I find this much easier than thinking about like, like I don't even have the words <laughs> to explain how um, get, uh, not get flow, uh, CSS uh, flow box, flex, no flex box. That's the word, uh, how that works. I suppose if I would have pulled up an article on flex box, I, some, some of the stuff would have come back to me, but. Grid does seem easier when you can use it. <laughs> All right, so back to here. How does that look? Yeah. Okay, that's not bad. 
I don't even know if we need two decimals of precision here. It's maybe a little bit much. Maybe one is fine. If that, maybe zero. But it's fine. Um... Maybe we want some kind of border here or something to indicate like, well, I mean, hmm. I guess probably what we want to have here is some iconography because looking at this is sometimes difficult to, to keep track of like where the start and end are. So if we had some kind of like icon before each of these to distinguish them or like a little arrow or something that might be good. But uh, we should probably move on to actually being able to edit this thing. Um, I don't think I even care so much about being able to like remove segments or move them around or anything like that. I do want to be able to edit them though. So this is interesting, right? So we we do get to some points where there's a large amount of uh, like the, the expression of the duration is kind of long. Right? Because this is this is a transcript from a stream that lasted for like four hours. Uh, although I think in practice what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this so that the streams are divided up into episodes and we'll see the transcript at the episode level. That's where we're going to then feed it into uh, um, into uh, GPT-4, I think at that point. So suppose I want to be able to click on this and it, it turns into like a text area to edit. How would I do that? Well, let's take a look. There we go. Okay, so mainly that pertains to the span here, right? So inside of the span, we have the text. So, I probably want to make it so that you can click anywhere in the segment to be able to edit it. And we'll do like, a, you know, a cursor change when you hover over the segment to indicate that clicking on this ed ed makes it editable or maybe have like an on hover or something, you know, there's styling that we can do, but let's let's get into the some of the functionality, right? Um, How are we gonna do this? So I think one thing we can do here is take this and make this a component. So rendering out the individual segment is could be a component, and then that component would have state, whether or not it's editable. That's an option. The thing is, is that I don't I don't know that we need to have the edit view visible for more than one segment at the same time. I think it's gonna be one at a time. So in that case, maybe we can have state at the level of this this whole component, saying here is the here is the segment that's editable, and we can do that here. Um, so to do that, we can just use the use state hook, right? So we can say const um, so we want to do something like editable segment. Or, or editing, yeah, editing, there we go. Um, and so I think this is gonna make sense if the state is either null, nui, null, or it's uh, a number. And that number will be kind of the index into the segment. This is where we'll need the index. <laughs> so uh, index. 
which is a number. There we go. Uh, so of course false is not either of those types. Null is what we're after there. And then what we want to do is we want to say if editing is not null, if it's equal to index, then we want to show a uh, a field. Now I wonder. Uh, let's do this. So if I if I do something like this, yeah, not that. If I say um, if index is equal to editing, exactly equal to. So triple equals means um, it's not coerced into like a string or something to be compared. It is it is uh, an exact equivalent. So if it's null, it won't be equal to index because index, um, the index value from the map will never be null. Um, and this is, I'm, I'm gonna accept this. I'm not actually gonna use, the, well, we'll see. So this is interesting, right? So this this is basically this, but we have an on click. I think I'm gonna take the on click. Uh, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll take the on click and we'll put it up here for the whole segment. There we go. And uh, then we can get rid of this. And maybe this will be fine, actually. Except we don't have form context. Uh, let's use form context, which it does for us. There we go. Um, so this is reaching into the form management thing that uh, uh, React took form that uh, React Admin uses. So we're able to like reach in and change the form. So the the record that is currently being edited. So this won't, in and of itself, it's not gonna like save it to the, the back end, to the server or anything. It's just going to save it into the state in the UI. Um, and then we want to also, I wonder, so if we do on change, does all on blur also get triggered? How's the behavior here work? So what are we doing here? So we say new segments is a copy of trans transcript segments. But we update the value at index, the thing that we're editing, its text to be that value from the, uh, the input here. Now, this is not gonna look right, just using a bare input element, but let, let's see what this is, this is like. We'll probably wanna go find the right element from Material UI to use instead. Do we have source here? We have source. Good. So this 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 looks good. This looks bright. But does it work? <laughs> and by work I mean we can click an element in the list of se uh, segments, and we get a input field. So like if I click here, okay. But we don't want an input field. We we do want a text area. Uh, but yeah, so then we have this. Uh, is there something, so if I click out of there, there we go, it goes back. If I, um, let's let's fix the text here. So this should be pal world. Ooh, that's slow. <laughs> and then I click out, there, it's updated. Uh, if I refresh, that'll go away, right? Because we haven't saved. Uh, yeah. Now, why was it slow when I was typing? Well, because every time I typed, it updated the whole list. We probably don't want that. Probably what we want to do is have kind of an internal value that represents the value that's being edited. And then we sync that value out on blur if it's present.
Yeah, we could probably do something like, um... Const... Um... We'll just call it buffer or something. There we go. Uh, except we're not gonna... It's not gonna be a, this. It's gonna be a null. If we're not editing anything right now, or if we haven't typed anything, or it's gonna be a string. And it's gonna start null. And the behavior here is going to be when we click, we're gonna set the buffer. Mm, no, no, we don't need to do that, do that there. Um, what we can do is when we, so the value here is going to be either buffer or segment.txt, right? So if buffer is null, then what we'll see is segment.txt. If there's something in buffer, that's what will be shown on the input. Um, and then on change, we only, we don't need to do this. Let's, let's come back to this. We're going to change this. It's going to call set buffer, but on blur, what we're going to do is we're going to say, if we, we are going to set buffer to null, but what we're going to say is we're going to say, if, um, if there's something in buffer, uh, that's fair. We can set buffer to null if there's something in buffer, but we can also um, do this bit to flush the buffer, if you will, to take whatever's in buffer if we've been editing, and um, we'll put buffer here, right? So we'll put buffer into the text value with the index, and we'll to form context that set value, and we'll clear the buffer. So then on change, all we need to do is set buffer. All right. So this might work. And if we've not edited anything, then buffer will be null. So we won't need to set buffer. So editing will be null. So then we'll stop seeing the input and then we'll just see what was originally in segment.txt. Um, if we did modify, if we did trigger on change and something was in the buffer, then we update the form uh, before we hide the input. And so then whatever uh, was in segment.txt has been updated with whatever we typed in, and that's what shows up then at that point. So I think that should be fine. Um, what else is there to do here? Well, we don't want an input. We probably, if nothing else, want a text area. Uh, maybe we want something else though. Let's, let's start with a text area. We could potentially use a material UI. Um, can you pass value to uh, a text area? Apparently you can. Okay, well, let's, let's try that. Uh, but potentially, yeah, we could use a material UI component instead if we care about the styling oh, escaped all right so search for movie again and there are all sorts of components here um, there's a text field and I think the text field can be used. Uncontrolled versus controlled. It's managed by its parents using props. I think controlled. So we can use text field from material UI, and then everything else basically works the same way. But let's uh, let's refresh this and see how it works right now, if at all before we worry too much about uh, other things. Those are normal errors, just ignore those. Just ignore those errors from beat. So if I click that, then I have a text area. And uh, we can click out of that. Oh, there's no on blur, apparently. Or, it, or is there? I just have to click the right place. We probably want uh, like a cancel button, honestly, uh, on top of uh, on blur. So yeah, let's let's see. 
P-A-L. Like, okay, no delay at all, instantly. I click out, and it, it saved, right? So from here, from here, I should be able to save the record, although it doesn't think I can. That's interesting. Like, um, we should have triggered a thing that said that, oh, the form is dirty now, and so it should be, we should be able to save. So that's also a bug. All right, back to here. All right, form context that set value, new segments. Should validate, true. Should dirty. Are there other options here that I'm missing? Should touch. Huh. What does should dirty do? Set value config. Should validate, should dirty, should touch. Huh. Okay, no. Let's look at set value. Trigger. Control, set focus, set error, get field value, good state. Hmm. No good. Um, So, so one thing I'm thinking about here is that I feel like there may be some um, some gotchas with how we are closing over index in this. So we have this function that we're passing to map and we're mass mapping over the trans transcript segments. I feel like this is something we probably want to create a separate component where the index is coming in as a prop per, per segment. So that's probably a thing to, to change, but it seems to at least be working other than the fact that uh, it's not telling the form that we should be able, that we need, that we have unsafe changes. Uh, which is problematic. Uh, so let's not worry about that quite yet. And instead, let's um, import text field from material UI. So unlike a text area, we do have to tell text field that it should be like a multi-line thing. There we go, multi-line. Um, if true, oops. There we go. So on change and on blur, on blur is a thing that's available to us. Uh, another thing we could do here is if we want a button, to, to save or to cancel or both. We could add that. I think the on blur is gonna be fine for now. It's not exactly user friendly. Um, but uh, it, it's fine for the moment. So let's refresh, restart the, the front end. else we want to do here probably it's time to refactor this into a separate component yeah I think so um, what's gonna be interesting here is so the state that we have here in this component that we're then sharing down 
do we need that? Where, where do we need the state? Do we need it in this component or in the child component? Um, I think buffer could be in the child component. We're not sharing like, yeah, yeah. It doesn't make sense. You, you could, you could have both uh, of these state values, editing and buffer inside of the child component. Um, but that is kind of entertaining the possibility that you might be editing multiple things, at least in this UI, that's not really possible because to click into one to activate it, you blur the other. And yeah, so I don't think that's necessary. So what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna take all of this stuff inside and we're gonna make a new component here. Um, const something. Um, maybe, I mean, we could have a very long name. It could be stream transcript segment input. Yeah, why not? We're, we're not running out of <laughs> space for identifier names yet. Uh, there we go, segment. Yep. Now it's gonna try to write something for me. Uh, I don't. I don't really want that right now. So we're just going to uh, do this. We're gonna paste. We're gonna close that off. There we go. Now we're gonna get lots of complaints about missing values. I'm uh, missing. You know, segments not defined. Uh, set editing is not defined. Index is not defined. Um, So, some of these things we definitely want to pass in. Uh, like I said, we can move buffer inside of this. Oops, I didn't want to click that, go away. Um, and then, there you go. System type, yeah, I know. Yeah, we don't need that. I think we don't need segments. Uh, set editing index is defined, but never you. That's a weird error. think this is ESLint being confused. Obviously nothing is ever used in a type definition, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure we need the name there for that to be valid. So I don't know what's going on with that. It's odd. But hey, that'll shut up ESLint. Um, and then, oh. Let's see. Okay, what we can probably do is we can lift this bit of code out. We can have like a um, an on save, I think. Where do we use index? Here and here. Okay, so segments, buffer, value. Yeah, I don't want to pass form context in here anyway. Let's get rid of that. Just basically defining the interface the where we're uh, relating between these two components, right? Do we use 
use source instead of here? I don't need that either. Can we use source instead of here? Yeah, for that. Okay, so I think we can get rid of source as well. Like this component doesn't need to know about that. This component doesn't hmm. I think we could be clever here right so this component doesn't need to know I guess that's fine we'll do it that way We're gonna do is we're gonna do like an on save. Like that. And we'll add that type as well. And then we just need to implement that function. Interesting. Oh, let's, let's see if we can make a simpler one. On save. Paste there and there. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah, so we do need index and buffer. Um, we don't need transcript segments because we already have that. So that should be fine like that. And then we pass that in. There we go. There we go. Why it's insisting on adding more things to that that should be fine we do need to add index which will always be a number and we pass index here And all the errors stop. All right, we've successfully extracted out this inner component. So that makes our, our parent uh, stream transcript input component quite a bit simpler, right? So now we have, we have some hooks, getting some access to state or preparing our own internal state. Uh, and then we have um, a handler, event handler function from our subcomponent that we're repeating multiple times, one per segment. So this all seems good. Um, I still don't, this should not have solved the issue with the form itself, not recognizing that it should uh, be savable. We'll see, we'll see. Let's wait for the, the front end to reload. Hmm. All right. And get my web browser back. Go back to our front end and refresh. So this is way better than where we started today, right? Because where we started, it was taking like a minute for the UI to load, just because there was so much heavy component. Um, I mean, the number of like things uh, hasn't really changed, but the amount of stuff, hey, you're back, welcome back. How long did it take you to learn all this? Um, well, for some definition of learn, uh, I've been, I started coding in uh, and around uh, 96, 97. Of course, this stuff wasn't around back then. <laughs> uh, React and TypeScript and all that stuff, right? Um, 
so like I was saying earlier in the stream, there's like there's a combination of right there's there's skills, uh, problem solving, and how to like figure out stuff and pattern matching and those sorts of things, and then there's knowledge. Um, you know, if you know patterns, if you know how to find resources, if you know, like, here's how I solve this kind of problem in a general sense, then the knowledge part is very helpful still, right? If you don't have the context of like, here's what's out there, here's what's available, you're gonna either reinvent the wheel or you're gonna spend a lot of time doing research to find that knowledge. But um, yeah, so I don't really have a good answer for how long it took me to learn all this because it's like scattered over a bunch of time while I was learning other things and doing other things. I started using React. Um, I think I first started looking at React and learning about it. That was uh, like 2017. Prior to that, a lot of the front end work I was doing was with AngularJS, like AngularJS 1. Um, and then prior to that, <laughs> uh, Backbone. And then prior to that, um, jQuery. And then prior to that, like just PHP and Python. Uh, and. <laughs> And lots of other languages. Oh, uh, prior to that, Visual Basic. Uh, and prior to that, stuff that didn't have a UI except for the command line. And HTML. Yeah. I mean, there's just, even, even back at the beginning of that, that road, right? There was so much um, in the software space. Like if you think about like, end application, libraries, operating systems, device drivers, um, firmware, hardware, and then there's just so much, right? Because our ability to create software and hardware uh, <laughs> isn't limited by an individual's capacity for understanding it all. Like we can just build more and more components and just stick more and more stuff on there. It's unbounded. So it's a, it's a really big iceberg. <laughs> uh, and I say that not to, you know, that kind of sounds daunting, but there's just so much possibility, right? And in, in all that. So, hey, we broke it. Excellent. Why, why broken? Dispatcher is null. Okay, why? Invalid hook call. Uh, oh, hold on. This might be the same thing where, let's just try refreshing. Something to do with Vite. Mini roads, exactly, exactly. So if I click this, okay, that works. I'm just ignore those errors. That's not a real thing. So now I should be able to edit this. Yep, and I can type in Pal World. And then if I like tab out, that worked. It's kind of fun because when I tabbed out, it like tabbed down to the bottom. But uh, yeah, so that edits. The issue is that um, it doesn't let me save. I don't know why that is. Like calling that function and saying, hey, uh, you know, now the form is dirty. Yeah, let's do this though. If I put in a description, now the form is savable. Although these are separate tabs, this is all one big form and I can click save. And uh, have I actually tested <laughs> saving? Uh, it seems like it worked. So if we go back here now. All right, so it saved the description, which is good. It's a little, a little slow still to load. Uh, not bad, there, okay. So like if we ref refresh now, if we refresh, you can see I have successfully updated the transcript. Now, where do we go from here? <laughs> uh, there's a lot to do. 
Um, one of the things I need to figure out is like, okay, we have all this information. How do we take this and turn it into individual episodes, right? So what we need is something. We need some way of looking at things, some kind of like timeline view. I mean, this is a timeline view of a sort. Maybe, maybe like, so I have this thing called transcriptions. It doesn't do anything right now, but maybe we could move some of this UI into a place that would be like um, a stream overview. We also have video clips here, right? That's giving us like, here's all the video files and all the metadata from them. Uh, we also have another service that we built that we've not integrated yet that detects silences. Um, but we need some kind of UI that's gonna show all that so that we can um, maybe auto pick or have some way of like saying, okay, here's where an episode starts and stops, maybe. Or maybe it's time to like start feeding this. I mean, this is, I, I happen to, well, I know that a third or a quarter of this transcript is not too much, whoops, clicked it, uh, is not too much to feed to uh, ChatGPT. Oh, also, you can click between them. Uh, clicking out is kind of weird. It doesn't seem to work all that well. Okay, so that's an issue. Uh, unfortunately, I'm kind of out of time for today, so we're, we're gonna leave this here. Uh, if I have time, <laughs> Maybe I can work on this a little bit more. Think think about it a little bit more between streams. Um, so all of this, all the stuff we worked on today, all the stuff so far is in GitHub. Uh, there is a open source uh, repository. There's a link to that in the coding channel in the community.